Dr. Amit Mitra, the Principal Chief Advisor to the West Bengal Chief Minister Mamta Banerjee and to the Finance Department of the West Bengal Government. Of course, Dr. Mitra is a former Finance Minister of uh, West Bengal and one of those economists who successfully made the transition to politics. And today we are talking about the budget that was presented earlier this week by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Lots of analysis that's come on the budget. Uh, Dr. Mitra, first of all, let me welcome you to the print. Welcome. Thank you. You're very welcome. So your first comments, uh, Dr. Mitra, on the budget, but before your, I ask you about your analysis on the budget, I do want to draw your attention to the Prime Minister. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi, in, in his speech to BJP workers on Wednesday, uh, which he which was described or which was titled Atmanirbhar Arthavyavastha, or Self-Reliant India or Self-Reliant Country, talked about how this budget paves the way to modernizing the country. And I quote, and he says, the budget focuses on the poor, the middle class and the youth and aims to provide them basic necessities. Our government is working on the provision to provide them these facilities. So your first comments. I think uh, that speech when uh, Honorable Prime Minister spoke to the nation after the budget, yeah. it was a very short speech and he obviously held back what he was going to say to the BJP party workers. Which is what? Uh, so he, let me start with the first question that you raised, which relates to Atma Nirbhar Bharat. Yeah. 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 You know how contradictory that is, public must know. India's import from China rose by 46.1%, 46% in the calendar year 2021. Mm -hmm. Can you believe that? Well, that I think that's perhaps because of the pandemic and that, you know, India was buying so much medical goods from China, right, from PPEs, although now India started manufacturing a lot of this stuff on its own. But see, perhaps all, these are, all, really these are, all these are excuses. All I'm saying is, if you look at the hard data, Atma Nirbhar would mean that you move towards self-reliance and the China is our uh, consistent process of issues, and yet for its in, inputs, to, for its exports to India to grow by 46.1% means that those items will not be produced in India, they will not be strengthened, etc. So my first submission is uh, that one part of Atma Nirbhar is totally contradictory. Okay. Number two is, uh, in talking about Atma Nirbhar, Narendra Modi government is going back to what they criticized all their life, which is to the Nehruvian model, where uh, there, there was import restrictions of a very high order. So they're continuously in the last one year or last one and a half years, and it's especially in the budget as well, they have targeted certain areas of imports and put massive import duties on them. Now, you rationalize that, of course, you have import, everybody has import duties. Okay. But what is interesting is there are many items which prices will go up, which relate to the modernization of our economy, where massive import duties have been put. So you can't have it both ways. Okay, so give me an example of that. Uh, that's, for example, uh, if you look at the list of items, uh, which uh, uh, you will find... Uh, uh, electronic, certain electronic things, mm -hmm. you put import duty. But you're merrily importing them from China today. So all your products are Chinese, if you look at that. Now, what are you going to do to strengthen those? So my first submission is that Atma Nirbha should be reflected with data. Uh, $100 billion, $100 billion have been imported during the calendar year 221 from China alone. Ru rupees so, 100 billion dollars. No, no dollars, sorry, sorry, say that. Again. Dollars yeah. 100 billion. Okay. Dollars 100 billion. And this has jumped, by the way, from 66.7 billion to 100 billion. You can't put all the blame on COVID on this. I mean, I can understand some medical issues because China produces certain ingredients of pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. That's okay. But your all-out 46% growth in imports from China, this is Atma Nirbhar Bharat, right? My second point is, another contradiction I'd like to bring out, is you are talking about a 25-year period. Mm -hmm. 
It's a vision of 25. Now, there is no base paper, so nobody knows what this 25 years is about. Uh, you sack the planning commission, which is a five-year perspective plan. That is what it did. No, the and planning commission have w- went eight years ago when Prime Minister Modi came to power. So that's an old story. Years. So that means you've come back to it. Now you're talking about uh, not only a planning commission in effect of five years, but 25 years. So he's now, looking ahead, isn't he? No, he's not looking ahead. This is typical uh, headline grabbing process with no substance. If you're looking ahead, you present a paper. You okay. say, this is, my, this is my path. Now, John Maynard Keynes said, in the long run, we are all dead. That's true. That means uh, basically economies cannot predict what will happen more than five years or so, because five years is the business cycle now. Mm-hmm. So the planning commission was defined by Subhash Chandra Bose, who started it. Jawaharlal Nehru was asked to chair it in a telegram by Subhash Chandra Bose. And there they created a five year. Why five years? All industrialists were part of that planning committee, it was called then. Mm-hmm. Because five years is a reasonable period when you try to understand what may happen in the future. Now you suddenly to head, grab headlines, you say, I am thinking of 25 years. Give me one country in the world. No, but you know, he's a politician, Dr. Mitra. He will say 25 years. He can say 50 years if he likes. Yes, yes, but yes. the fact is, elections will be held uh, two years from now in 2024. Yeah. So today, if the Prime Minister says, Atmanirbhar, Artvivastha, or self-reliant yeah. India... Very nice. I mean, it is very good for politicians. But are you going to judge the prime minister of the country on a local politician of the council, maybe, of the local uh, body who says uh, something which they, for their own reasons, may say it in that manner? We expect the prime minister to say with substance. So you talk about 25 years without a base paper. This is like demonetization. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows who the advice from demonetization came from today. But everybody agrees, all economists agree, it was a killer. 86% of money being demonetized, only Gaddafi has done. And Soviet Union did twice. Other than that, nobody in the world ever thought of 86% current. Now, who advised? Where was the base paper? Now I go to the third point okay. of that uh, speech. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, uh, he said to the workers... And very nicely, it's very good, that the world wants a democracy and diverse nation. Democratic nation, diverse nation. Right. What what do I find? I'm not talking about opposition now. I'm not talking about politicians. Mm -hmm. 100 IITians, Mm -hmm. people who have graduated from IIT from 1962 onwards and still alive, some of them, have written a letter to the prime minister official. In which, what do they say? They say they are deeply worried and dark clouds looming. Mm -hmm. Now, what do they say? They say that Suli deal and bully by act, shameful saga of anti-democratic and anti-diversity process. So you're referring to these apps in which women uh, were auctioned, which was a really, it was like an absolutely shameful blot or a shameful sort of incident or a chapter in our democracy. Because Absolutely. Now, the third thing they say, which is even more important, uh, is a tech form application. Mm-hmm. What does this do? It essentially targets women in the media, women like you or your colleagues, with organized abuse. Now, when he's talking of diversity, when he's talking about democracy, and now you have the Pegasus scandal. Okay. Of $2 billion, $2 billion from Israel, what he bought, nobody knows. He's not, not willing to explain to parliament, not willing to explain to the, to the Supreme Court of India. But these are examples that when you talk of diversity, what you are in effect doing is you speak of diversity, but you undermine diversity. You target minorities. Every democratic institution is today under threat. So okay. I am making there for three points. Right. In speech, because I don't want to elaborate beyond sure. that. I have a lot of other points. One, yeah. Atma Nirbhar Bharat and China's massive jump in imports are not consistent. And the prime minister ought to hear that. He may not be knowing that. People won't tell him that. People don't tell authoritarian people what the truth is. Okay. Number two, number two, second point I made for you 
is you think of a 25 year for headlines without a base paper, no responsible. I get that. The president does it. And number yeah, I, three, yeah. when you talk of democracy and diversity, every evidence, and I'm not okay. talking about the opposition. Sure. Let me, yes. But yeah, Dr. Mitra, I, I get the three points that you have made uh, to the prime minister's speech and all very well taken. Uh, of course, everybody knows that you know, in your position right now as the principal chief advisor in an opposition government. But that doesn't mean that you are only making these points because you're in opposition to the BJP. But let me ask you about the budget. Now, there has been um, a lot of applause for Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman because she has allowed only a 0.86% increase in revenue expenditure. And so in a sense, as India emerges from the pandemic, uh, we all, of course, crossing our fingers and we hope that it's sooner than uh, later. And because India has been through such trauma these last couple of years, the fact that she is going to curtail or is trying to curtail a budget, the expenditure, would you not say that's a good thing? I think you see the first point is what is your crisis point, which the budget has to address. Mm -hmm. Now, the first point I would like to make relates to unemployment. Everybody is aware now a budget is not a private corporate paper in the presented in the board. Right. Government has the responsibility with regard to macroeconomy, the economy, where there's market failure, where there is uh, uh, where there are public goods and where there is great stress among the common people. Budget has to address that along with uh, walking on two feet. That's the first priority. Now, what happens to unemployment? You'd be interested to know the RSS Swadeshi Jagaran Manch has come out yesterday, mm -hmm. saying they're very concerned about the uh, uh, what they formally call very little effort on unemployment. Now, let me give you an example. Already three crores people, according to government data, were unemployed mm -hmm. when this budget began. Now, uh, in addition, approximately 12 to 13 million people. That is, uh, uh, that is 1.2 to uh, 1.3 crore people are joining the labor force every year. And by the way, uh, approximately 5 million of them out of the 12, 13 million are young people who are educated. That means you have a stock of 30 million unemployed. And you're adding approximately 12 to 13 million every year. We are emerging from a pandemic, Dr. Mitra. You know, I think but everybody recognizes. Uh, pardon me. This is 2019 data. Unemployment in 2019 before the pandemic was 30 crores. Okay. But that is what is interesting. That pandemic, uh, it, that same trend continues into the pandemic, but why that pan number hasn't grown so much? Because we don't know, we don't have measures for the informal sector, right. which is completely fractured, but we don't count it in the unemployment. Mm -hmm. We don't have good data on small and medium enterprise. If you count those, the 30 million will climb to 50 million. So I'm sticking to 30 million. Mm -hmm. Now you're adding, you've got a stock of 30 million people unemployed whom you have to employ. The budget has to help that. Number two, Every year, you're going to get 12 to 13 million additional people joining the labor force. Now, what does the budget do immediately? Now, what have other countries done? Yeah, Let us take some, yeah let's take some lessons. Okay. United States, UK, France, Germany, and developing countries, by the way, what is called emerging markets, have 4.7% of their budget is fiscal stimulus. Mm -hmm. Now, she has tried to increase that a little bit by making some statements on capital in expenditure. But even the emerging markets understand that mm -hmm. first you stimulate demand to, demand to employ people who are putting money in the hands of the common people. West Bengal grew by 1.2% positive mm -hmm. when India grew by negative 7.7%. How? Don't you learn a lesson from that? Right. Dr. Mitra, two, two points that I'd like to make here. The first is that uh, to the unemployment question, I think that's a valid criticism. But the fact is also that the government is borrowing money. In fact, it's going to borrow as much as 32%, increase of 32% in market borrowings to finance 
capital expenditure, increased capital in expenditure, uh, more projects in terms of highways, expressways, uh, other infrastructure projects, that will generate employment. Yeah, but you see, the problem is that this is all known to economists. Mm -hmm. The first stage of do, in a pandemic or Great Depression or financial crisis of 2008, the first step you take is demand stimulation. Then you start supply stimulation in two synchro synchronized phases. But Dr. Mitra, the, the country is in a way, it's broke. I mean, look at the, 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 the fiscal deficit. It is so high. I think Nirmala Sitaraman is targeting that it should be brought down to 4%. Of course, that's not going to happen right now. It's, I think, 6.9%. But if, the, if you don't have the money and if you're going to you know, throw away good money after bad, then I think... Uh, one of the, uh, yeah. uh, uh, Ms. Malhotra, may I say that if you countries broke, yeah. do you cut corporate taxes by 10% last year? Expecting they will invest. They never invested. What happened? Poor corporates, when they, they naturally, if you give a tax cut, they'll take it. Of course. What did they do? They didn't invest. They put it in their books. You have highest, look at the paradox, highest profit or corporate or listed companies of India, that means large corporations, highest profit in the last four years, in the middle of the pandemic, where unemployment has reached almost 8%, inflation has reached all uh, inflation, wholesale price index inflation, 14% and consumer price index, which you and I buy products from, close to the red line of 6%. On one hand, you have unemployment, you have massive inflation, corporate profits highest in the world, which is, in my view, policy-induced profit. This is what this government has done. So if you're but, broke, but, why do you cut corporate taxes? But then it's not that you know it's not the government's job to to tell the corporates to stimulate employment. I mean the corporates have to do that on its own. That's why in a sense you are persuading them that you're cutting taxes and in the hope that they will increase employment and give jobs to people. See, now, but, what, uh, but let me say that this is borrowed from Ronald Reagan. It's called the supply side economics. Ronald Reagan was correcting simply a business cycle. Okay. The, he was not facing a great depression of the United States. So what is interesting is that today, uh, this government is lost in terms of macroeconomic policy. Unemployment is one. The second point I want to bring to you, which is even more telling, is the poverty rising. Uh, now, Pew Research Center has done some work, which is now in the public domain. Uh, it is interesting that number of poor in India in one year, using calendar year 2021, has exactly doubled. So from 60 million poor, and how do you measure poor? $2 on a purchasing power parity basis, which is the best, most scientific way of measuring. Mm -hmm. so from 60 million, in one year, it has jumped to 134 million poor in this country. And after 45 years, India has come back into the list, global list, of extremely poor people in the country. Now, shouldn't the budget address this? Now, you're talking about 25 years. What happens to 134 million poor? And that number, by the way, is less than what other studies have shown. 134 million people are poor. What are you going to do in that budget? We have done that in West Bengal. Mm -hmm. So our GDP, it's a double uh, positive value. Our GDP is 1.2% positive, and India is negative 7.7%. Right. What do you see in the budget for the uh, those who have fallen below the poverty line, well documented, what is it there in the budget? Now you say I have given capital expenditure, excuse me, capital expenditure is the second part, synchronized the second part where it takes three to five years. Mm -hmm. You cannot build a road in five days. Number two, when you talk of roads, you know what West Bengal has found? Mm -hmm. Real need for, for roads, aside from national highways, is the connecting roads to villages and inside the village roads. Right. West Bengal has built a record number of inside the village road of thousands of kilometers which government of India has recognized. Now, they, they, there's no thinking behind this. So you are creating infrastructure. That's a good thing. The fact no, is that you're are employing are, people. We are, by creating, creating, we are walking on two feet. Yeah. Creating infrastructure while transferring resources to the bottom of the pyramid to the common people so that they create demand. 
The minute you create demand, the corporates will respond. They will buy more machinery, plant equipment, which is called capital expenditure investment. And then you go to the, uh, to the cycle, which is everybody wherever one wants. That this government doesn't understand macroeconomics. So it puts the off. A uh, cart before the horse. But in a sense, perhaps, you know, the phys- uh, philosoph- philosophical orientation of the government is different. Uh, you, know, you know, for example, I mean, you would say you would look upon this as a criticism that 25 percent of the of the of Narega, of the Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme has been cut. So 25 percent of that has been cut. Um, and there's only been a very marginal rise in the PM Kisan Samman scheme. Now, my question is that let us let me play devil's advocate. You, we know that while uh, in Manrega, you, every family should get 100 man days per year minimum uh, of employment and therefore um, and therefore the equivalent sort of uh, basic uh, income. But what happens is that very often the work that is done or the jobs that are done are actually pretty meaningless. So, in a sense, yeah, if you're yeah. going to, if so, so, so just uh, uh, you know, one one more second. So, if you're going to create infrastructure, in a, which in a sense is you know will contribute to the development of the country, rather than doing these small jobs, digging a well, or just sort of pushing mud from one side or the other to the road. I mean, we, the the Manrega is a good project. It's well meant. But it's really a lot of scarce resources being wasted. Well, you see, this is the typical middle class, upper middle class response. Because you don't have a constituency or the government doesn't bother about a constituency. Where 80% people are poor. Now, let me say, there are, it's not Manrega only. Mm-hmm. There are three things the government has done. One, agricultural uh, spending, they have not increased. Agriculture, which has saved you during the uh, pandemic period. Number two, in rural development uh, uh, allocation, they have not increased. Number three, they've cut Manrega by 25%, 100 100 days work. Now, are you aware uh, that 32 million people return to their homes as migrants in uh, entire Hindi-speaking belt? as well as Urissa, Jharkhand, Bengal, returned to the... And where did they go? To, just to save their livelihood. Now, while, of course, they were, uh, they were spending from their savings, borrowing from uh, relatives and friends, they were able to stand a little bit on the Manrega project. 32 million people. Now, you don't care about them. You're worried about what, whether they're building this or building... Roosevelt said... During Great Depression, I would rather have people dig wells, dig earth, and fill it. Now, that's leadership. They understand the Keynesian uh, stimulation model. I think Manrega is doing great thing in West Bengal. We have monitored it. We have found this huge uh, infrastructure creation. So my submission to you, is this a strategic thing that you don't increase agriculture? You don't agree, increase rural uh, uh, rural developmental projects. You don't increase allocation. You cut Manrega of 25. So, Is there an antipathy towards the farmers? Because for one year, they, they fought against you, and finally they won because of your upcoming elections in UP. You had to reverse your decision. I don't understand how these three things... Reduction in ag- uh, not increasing agricultural allocation, not increasing rural developmental programs, and cutting Manrega by 25%, the three go together hand in hand. So, so, let, me, is- yeah, so let, me, let me play devil's advocate again. Now, if you're accusing the government of not having compassion for the poor, right? I'm not talking about compassion. This is pragmatic stuff. That you have 32 million people who have returned from their jobs because they lost their jobs. Surat had one million power looms broken and sold as scrap after demonetization. And that continued into the GST and that continued into the pandemic. Right. Well, who were the people working there? People from outside of Gujarat. Gujarat doesn't have that size population. Mm-hmm. They have returned and they're working in Manrega, creating some infrastructure successfully. Okay. So my, my simple point to you is, is it possible at all to think of a government that strategically 
undermines agriculture by not allocating more in agriculture, not allocating in rural development, which people will understand. They will read the, they read the numbers. And then you cut Manrega by 25%. These three things go hand in hand. But Dr. Mitra, can I just say, and like I said, I'm playing devil's advocate again, which is that five election, uh, five states are going to the elections. The elections are looming large. We are in the middle of the election campaign, including in, in the mother of all elections in Uttar Pradesh. The fact that the government uh, has not is not playing to the gallery. You're accusing the, the government of having an antipathy to the poor or to, to the farmers. Now, the fact that they're not playing to this gallery by uh, cutting, like you said, Manrega funds by 25%, et cetera, that means that they're not looking at immediate electoral political gains and that it's no, no, more... It's not. I think there's something deeper than that. Okay. You see, the deeper is what you do is you cut corporate taxes by 10%. At that time, you didn't feel any empathy or disempathy. This time, you cut surcharge from 12% to 7%. Very good. But you don't provide for the 134 million poor. You don't do anything about state level, what is called uh, centrally supported um, uh, CSS, centrally supported schemes, central schemes. And you know what's interesting? People have begun to see that it is the states which make the capital investment. That has been the consistent pattern in India because they are the ones who's from their budget, they provide, they are in charge for ground level implementation of these kinds of projects. So what has happened is, uh, what I find most shocking is, it's nothing to do with, you know, uh, not playing to the gallery. You have a, you are the government, you have the maximum rise in poverty, you don't address. It. So what is a strategic issue that you're driving at? You've said, you've used this word again and again, that there is a strategic concern here. I think the strategic concern, one is that uh, probably there is a, you know, this government is often seen as being uh, devastatingly revengeful of various things. I don't know. I cannot explain to you why three things in agriculture simultaneously have not been addressed. Now, what have you addressed? You have addressed various things which are pie in the sky. Now, which you don't know. And you 25 years. I want to challenge this. Please point to any country which has a 25 year without a single piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Now, I can understand if Niti Ayog produced a 25 year plan which is available for debate by you and us, a devil's advocate or not so devil's advocate, doesn't matter. Okay. There's no piece of paper. So, this is typically like demonetization. Nobody advises, nobody, no paper is produced. One person goes in TV, the cabinet also is not aware of it because they are called into the uh, process. So, so you're saying the budget is a chapter two of the demonetization um, episode that took place? I wouldn't say chapter two. I would say the budget is something, this budget is something that has produced a pie in the sky without any basis of the 25 years. Okay. It is talking about capital expenditure. Do you expect capital expenditure of 75 Lack crores to be done in one year? Of course not. So what you are now, how many jobs does the budget want, does it want to create? 60 lakh jobs in five years. That is 12, that is official speech. 12 lakh jobs a year. Now, when you know 30 lakh people are unemployed, according to your own data, and 12 lakh people will join the labor force every year for the five years. You are saying I'll create 12 lakh jobs. You know, uh, Dr. Um, Mitra, you, t- you were talking about foreign countries. Now, you, you know Deng Xiaoping said very well um, some decades ago to get rich is glorious. So perhaps Prime Minister Modi is, is, you know, unintentionally at least following that maxim, which is that you're creating wealth and by reducing the taxes of the corporate world, and that will stimulate jobs. I mean, I'm, I can only guess at what he's doing, but I'm just... Uh, uh, as far as Deng Xiaoping is concerned, what he said, he's very clever. He was work, walking on two feet, not on one foot. <laughs> so while he said, you know, to make money, you know, whether the cat is black or white, doesn't matter. Yeah. But have to catch what, did China, what did China's policies do? It, ha- it lifted the poor through concerted policy process in China that is available in the public domain. That is Deng Deng Xiaoping's contribution where he pushed the uh, economy. So address unemployment, address poverty, and with it, 
you know, out of the 7.5 lakh crores, easily 5 lakh crores could have gone for these fundamental, immediate processes of bringing people back into the market. Okay, last question. You you know, I swear that the household expenditure has fallen by a significant quantum. Now, when it household expenditures fall, you don't have demand in the market. So fast-moving consumer goods are big corporates, most of them. They are saying, you see, uh, in in an interview on one channel I won't mention, they were industrialists before the budget. And they all said, what we want is demand creation at the bottom of the pyramid. These are industrialists speaking. Now, poor industries can't, after the budget, say this in a, in a government that is has p- pegosus after you. Okay, so, so let, me, let me ask you the last question, which is that, you know, you're in an opposition state. Now, before the budget, would uh, I'm wondering, did you have discussions, which I'm sure you did, discussions with the central government? Have your suggestions been taken on board? What is the relationship like today between an opposition rule state like yours and the central government ruled by the BJP. See, what's interesting is this new, this uh, the Modi government, especially in the second term, and partly it began in the first term, there is a complete centralization of administration mm-hmm. and zero consultation. So even that, uh, there are several... So no consultation before the budget? No, no, no consultation with their own cabinet. There are cabinet ministers who have told me when demonetization happened, they were called into a room in the and they thought there'll be some discussion and some new programs will be discussed. Their cell phones were taken away, mm-hmm. and then they saw on the screen of the television, Honorable Prime Minister come up and say demonetization. Apparently, one of them got up to say, Now that announcement has been made, I want to leave. Is it wait, wait, wait? English part of that speech has to be given. This told to me by two cabinet ministers who are old friends of mine. So, what are you talking about? Consultation with states. Hello, consult your cabinet. So in this budget, did did the did the finance minister, did Ms. Sita, Sita Raman and her team, did they yeah. consult with you in West Bengal? Yeah, yeah. They held a meeting of the states, and what happens is the same as the GST meetings today. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, when uh, late Arun Jaitley was there, there was discussion in the GST meetings where, where when we came to a hiatus, when we were having differences, he will take a tea break. Mm-hmm. In the tea break, we will sit and thrash out our differences come back to the meeting, then a consensus would take place, which you will announce in the meeting itself. What is happening today? You take the case of textiles. You increase the textile GST, which will kill the textile industry. In October, no consultation of the discussion. Yes, six hours, everybody spoke. Six hours. After that, the Honorable Minister went to the media and said something. Now, then we see in the fine print, that G, uh, the GST on textile is going to shoot up from 5% to 12%. So the entire textile industry goes clear, nuts. Mm-hmm. I do a press conference and I say that by 31st of December, you must have a GST council meeting where you reverse this. Or from 1st of January, you'll implement it. Something there was no consensus on. Mm-hmm. Agitation started in Surat. So what happened? 31st of December, as I had demanded, they held a meeting, single agenda deferment of the GST compensation, the GST increase in textile. This is typically what this government is about. So when you say, have they consulted us on the budget? Is there an open-mindedness? I'm sorry to say that it is not there. It is not there in the center itself. Right, Dr. Mitra, I, I, I do hope, we all of us hope that, you know, we live in the world's largest democracy and that that there will be more transparent engagement between the center and and states like yourselves, not just opposition rule states, but all states. But uh, thank you so much for your time, for explaining the budget, for for um, for explaining your criticisms of the budget. And I do appreciate you joining me on the print. Thank you again. Thank you very much.